The moon hung like a silver coin in the sky, casting its pale light over the dark waters of the Caribbean. The Queen Anne's Revenge, once the most feared ship to sail the seas under the command of the infamous pirate Blackbeard, lay anchored in a hidden cove off the coast of Ocracoke Island. But the ship, with its tattered black sails and weathered hull, was no longer a symbol of terror. It was a relic, abandoned and decaying, its fearsome captain long gone, or so the world believed. Captain Gideon Harrow stood at the helm of the Seahawk, his eyes fixed on the ghostly silhouette of the Queen Anne's Revenge. His crew murmured uneasily around him, casting nervous glances at the cursed ship. The Seahawk had been tailing merchant vessels through these waters when rumors reached them that the wreck of Blackbeard's flagship had been spotted, still intact, hidden in this very cove. It's just a wreck, Captain, his first mate, Jonas Bell, said, his voice low and tense. A dead ship, nothing more. We should leave it be. Gideon's lips curled into a thin smile. A dead ship, perhaps, but with a very real treasure. Blackbeard was said to have hidden a great fortune aboard his ship. Gold, jewels, and other plunder. Whoever claims it will be rich beyond measure. Jonas frowned, his gaze never leaving the looming shadow of the Queen Anne's revenge. They say his spirit guards it still, that anyone who boards that ship never returns. Superstitions and ghost stories, Gideon scoffed, though even he felt a chill as he stared at the derelict vessel. Gather the men. We're going aboard. The crew hesitated, fear etched on their faces, but Gideon's reputation as a ruthless captain brooked no argument. Reluctantly, they lowered the longboat into the water, their oars dipping into the sea with quiet splashes as they made their way toward the ghostly ship. As they approached, the Queen Anne's revenge seemed to loom larger, her black hull rising from the water like a specter from the deep. The ship was eerily quiet, the only sound the creak of old timbers and the faint whisper of the wind through her rigging. The smell of salt and decay hung heavy in the air. Gideon climbed aboard first, his boots thudding on the deck. The wood felt damp and spongy underfoot, but it held. He turned to the men, gesturing for them to follow. One by one, they clambered aboard, their eyes darting nervously around the ship. The deck was a desolate sight. Ropes hung limply from the masts, and the remnants of old barrels and crates were scattered about, covered in a thin layer of dust and seaweed. The figurehead at the bow, a fierce-looking woman with a crown and a sword, seemed to glare down at them, her eyes hollow and dark. Spread out, Gideon ordered. Look for anything valuable. The treasure should be in the captain's cabin. Jonas nodded, leading a small group towards the stern, while Gideon and the rest moved below deck. The corridors were narrow and dark, the air thick with the smell of mold and rot. Their lanterns cast flickering shadows on the walls, and every creak of the ship seemed to echo with unseen footsteps. They found the captain's cabin easily enough. The door hung ajar, revealing a surprisingly intact room, as if it had been frozen in time. A massive, dust-covered desk dominated the space, and behind it, an ornate wooden chest sat partially hidden under a pile of old maps and charts. Gideon's heart raced as he stepped forward, his fingers itching to pry the chest open. He shoved the maps aside and knelt before it, his breath catching as he saw the lock, rusted but intact. He took a knife and pried it open, the sound of the metal snapping echoing loudly in the silence. With trembling hands, he lifted the lid. The inside was lined with black velvet, and nestled within were piles of gold coins, sparkling jewels, and a strange carved obsidian amulet. 
Gideon's eyes widened, his greed overcoming the faint sense of unease that tugged at him. We found it, he exclaimed, his voice filled with triumph. Blackbeard's treasure! The men crowded around, their eyes gleaming with excitement. But as Gideon reached for the amulet, a chill swept through the room and the lanterns flickered. The temperature dropped sharply, and the shadows seemed to deepen, shifting and coiling like dark smoke. What the hell? Jonas muttered, his voice barely a whisper. A deep, rumbling laugh echoed through the cabin, a sound that seemed to vibrate through the very timbers of the ship. The men froze, their eyes wide with fear, as a shadow detached itself from the corner of the room and moved towards them. It was a man, or what had once been a man, tall, broad-shouldered, clad in tattered black. His beard was a mass of dark, tangled hair, and his eyes glowed with an eerie, otherworldly light. In his hand, he held a cutlass, its blade gleaming with an unnatural blue fire. Blackbeard! Gideon breathed, his voice trembling. The specter's grin widened, revealing teeth sharp and white. I, Blackbeard, he growled, his voice like the roar of the sea in a storm. You've come for my treasure, have you? Gideon tried to speak, but his throat had gone dry. He forced himself to stand, drawing his sword with a shaking hand. We, we don't want trouble. We just want the gold. Blackbeard's laugh echoed again, a sound filled with malice and mockery. The gold, I. Many have come for it just like you, all fools thinking they could take what's mine. His eyes blazed. You'll pay for your greed. He raised his cutlass, and the cabin was suddenly filled with the sound of chains rattling, the walls closing in with a suffocating pressure. The shadows on the walls twisted and writhed, forming ghostly shapes, faces, hands, reaching, clawing. The crew screamed as the shadows came alive, spectral forms emerging from the walls, their hollow eyes fixed on the living, cold, ethereal hands grasped at them, dragging them down, their voices rising in a horrible, wailing chorus. Run! Jonah shouted. But there was nowhere to go. The cabin was a swirling maelstrom of darkness and cold, the air filled with the cries of the damned. Gideon stumbled back, his eyes wide with terror as he saw his men being pulled into the shadows, their faces contorted in agony. Leave the treasure, Blackbeard hissed, his voice a deadly whisper. Leave it, and I might let you live. Gideon's gaze darted to the chest, then back to the ghostly pirate. His mind raced. Could he make it? Could he grab the amulet and escape? He lunged, his hand closing around the obsidian stone, but as he did, a searing pain shot through his body. He cried out, dropping to his knees as the amulet pulsed with a dark, malevolent light. The shadows surged forward, wrapping around him like chains, tightening, squeezing the breath from his lungs. Blackbeard stepped closer, his face inches from Gideon's, his eyes burning with fury. You're mine now, boy, he snarled. Yours is the fate of all who seek to take what belongs to me. With a final wrenching pull, the shadows dragged Gideon down, his scream fading into the cold, suffocating darkness. The chest snapped shut, the light in the cabin dimming to a faint, sickly glow. Outside, on the deck of the Queen Anne's Revenge, the remaining crew of the Seahawk stood frozen in terror as the ship began to creak and groan. The air around them grew thick, the mist swirling, and then the ship itself seemed to shudder, a low, mournful sound echoing through the night. The Seahawk was gone, vanished into the fog, leaving the Queen Anne's revenge alone and silent once more. 
the crew, those who were left, scrambled into the longboat, rowing frantically away from the cursed ship, their eyes wide with fear, their hearts pounding. As they fled, they could still hear the faint, mocking laughter of Blackbeard echoing across the dark waters. 